wow. I made it entirely in the microwave. Um, <laughs> bye. If you're just reheating leftovers and zapping your cold coffee, you're not getting the most out of your microwave. You know, these days, microwaves are a real cooking tool. We've been using them more and more in recipes to take over jobs that they can do easier and faster. And as microwaves take a front and center seat in home cooking, microwave-specific cookware is also blossoming on store shelves. You may have seen the brand Any Day, which is backed by celebrity chef David Chang. So what makes a good microwave? And is that cookware designed to cook entire meals in your microwave even worth it? Hannah and I will give you the full rundown of our testing and give you some great tips and tricks for getting more out of your microwave. First up, Lisa with her microwave testing. So it helps understand how microwave ovens work. They're powered by something called a magnetron, which generates electric current and waves that are called microwaves. And these can pass through plastic, glass, and other materials, but they're absorbed by food. And they get the water molecules and to some extent the fat molecules vibrating, and that creates heat that cooks your food. Microwaves only penetrate the outermost layer of the food, though, because they're not cooking from the inside out, like some people say. It's coming from the outside, and it's only the top, maybe half inch of the food that's getting hot from the microwaves. The rest of it heats up by conduction, just the heat is traveling inward from the hot surface. Microwave ovens cycle the power on and off when they work. The magnetron will kick in, and then it will turn off again. You can hear that. You'll hear a fan going continuously, and then a sort of louder hum will come in and go out, and that's the magnetron coming on or turning off. So the turntable is there to rotate your food in and out of the microwaves. They have a certain wave pattern and if you put the bowl or food a little bit off center it helps because in the center you're just hitting the same spots over and over again and we even saw some scorching when we did things right in the center that we didn't see when we moved food off center. It's also good to flip and turn and stir your food. That's a great tip for just evening out that heating. Just move that food around so that it'll get more even heating. I just recently tested a whole bunch of microwaves and put them through all their paces. This is our winner. It's called the Breville Compact Wave Soft Close Microwave. And there's a bunch of things we really liked about this model. So here's the soft close part. I love it. This handle has soft close. So it's not just clunking around. And you don't have to do that thing where you're like poking that button. And it's, it feels like some microwaves you're like, karate chopping it and it's like hitting your hand, it's ugh. And we tested models that were bigger and smaller, more and less powerful. Here's the things you want to focus in on. First off, what you want to look for is a microwave with moderate wattage. It's often written like up top here or on the side or on the back of the microwave and it will tell you what the wattage is. You want something in the mid-range, 900 to 1,000 watts, and here's why. You might think, no, 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 let me get the most powerful one I can. That does not help you. Most of the time when you're cooking with a high wattage microwave, like 1200 watts and up, all you're doing is exploding your food. Like you put butter in there and boom, it's everywhere. That is not great. One of the things that I learned from doing this testing is that you want to use lower power percentages. So cut it in half and see how that goes. You can always add time, but you can't, you know, once you've gone too far and that butter is blown up inside of there or whatever you've done is just too overcooked, you can't go back. So experiment, but try lowering your power percentage if you have a very powerful microwave. So on this microwave, it's much easier than on some of them. There's a button that just says power right here, power. You hit that, that's 100% power. 90, 80, 70, 60, 50. 50% is good. Cut things in half and see where it goes. 40, 30, 20. So you can cook very gently with this, or you can use full power. To set the time, you're going to just turn this knob, and that will give you the number of seconds, or if you keep going, you've got minutes. It's very, very easy. And then, you know, the buttons down the bottom are great because green for go, red for stop. One of the ones I tested had those colors reversed. Like, in what world does that make sense? This really had simple, intuitive controls, and that's something you want. Some of the models we tested had buttons for all kinds of things, like kids' meals and snacks or healthy cooking. And it was like, really, what is that? What does that even mean? And less is more with the controls of a microwave. Simple, straightforward, intuitive controls will always be better. Another thing you want to look for is a moderate size. Now, unless you're microwaving like giant things, you don't need the biggest microwave they make. We really liked models that were about 0.9 or 1 cubic feet. 
bigger ones just were enormous on the outside and didn't give you that much more usable interior space. Smaller ones, we had one that was 0.7 cubic feet. It'd be fine for a smaller household. It's really, it was just, you know, a little bit more petite than this. But this is a good moderate size. You just want something that you can use. So you don't want the most enormous machine you could ever find. The other thing I really love is that this has got little feet that set it up off the counter. A lot of the ones we tested are flush to the bottom. It looks really high tech and stuff, but it's a pain in the neck. If you have anything in front of the microwave, this can open over it. I am constantly moving a pot holder or a plate or a towel away from the front of my microwave because I open it, it jams, I'm like, oh, move it. It's really a, like a little extra that I love. The last thing is that it has this brushed finish, which honestly is great because it doesn't show fingerprints. So many microwaves on the market right now are stainless steel and black glass, and it looks all like, you know, futuristic. But every time you touch them, you leave a fingerprint or a smear or a smudge. This stayed clean inside and out, was really easy to maintain. And you know, that matters. You don't want something that just sits there on your counter all the time looking grubby. We highly recommend this model by Breville, but we also liked a model by Sharp that had a few features this one didn't. It was a little bit less expensive and it performed really well. So we also recommend it. So here's a bunch of stuff we love to do in the microwave. I personally have done lots of things like frying shallots or onions, drying out eggplant or mushrooms before cooking them to take out some of that excess moisture. It works as a steamer. You can put a cover on, uh, you can use a plate. I love the Piggy Steamer. I think I use this 100 times a day. I just plop that on. It doesn't have to completely seal. Plenty of steam will be trapped in there. And you're just gonna put it in. And then I'm gonna dial up about four minutes and take a look. Go. By the way, this is one of the things we really liked about this microwave. It says end when it's done, and it stays saying end until you open this. So you don't find like yesterday's old food sitting in there. And there is our beautiful broccoli. It's gonna be pretty hot. Okay. Now the beauty of this is you can, you know, you've got steamed broccoli for dinner. You can add something to this, olive oil, herbs, spices, whatever. Or you can use this to, you know, just start par cooking the broccoli and then put it in a stir fry so it really will be cooked all the way through and you don't, you know, it, it's a little bit easier to get the right texture that you want. It's a really quick vegetable side dish that kind of takes care of itself while you're making other parts of the meal. So another great thing to do in your microwave is corn on the cob. You don't have to start boiling a huge pot of water. It's very quick and very easy. There's two ways to do it. You can either husk it completely and then wrap it in plastic and microwave it, or you can use its own husk. And you don't even really have to put it on a plate. You can just put the corn right on the turntable. I'm gonna run it for five minutes and go. With this, you can you know, go up to about 10 minutes if you have more ears of corn, but you know, always start a little bit low and then check. There we go. It's hot, it's steamy. There, look at this. <laughs> this perfect, perfectly steamed corn on the cob in the microwave in five minutes. You can add some butter and salt and pepper, um, but look at this. So easy, so fast, no big pot of water, nothing to pour out when you're done. It's ready to go. Microwaving isn't all about vegetables. We got some delicious mug cake. Whoever thought you could bake in a microwave? Everybody's been making mug cakes. They're viral, but you know, there's a reason because it's so easy. And you're basically using a mug, a whisk, and a bowl. And that's all you need. Okay, so it's got a solid shape and it's still a little wet on top and that's fine. Um, we're gonna let it rest for two minutes and that will carry over the cooking. Make sure that chocolate inside is nice and molten and liquidy and delicious and then it'll be ready to serve. Bye. <laughs> this is so good. It's delicious, it's warm, it's chocolatey, it's gooey made it entirely in a mug in the microwave. Now Hannah's gonna show you cookware that's designed to make whole meals in your microwave. All right, so today I'm going to talk about any day microwave cookware. I have a set right here. This line promises to cook complete meals in your microwave. So we had to put this to the test. Any day cookware comes in sets or it's sold separately. This is the everyday set right here. It has four pieces in different sizes. Today I'm gonna cook from the large shallow 
That's how they call them, all different names based on their sizes right here. I'm going to get rid of the rest of these and we're going to focus on this size. I'm going to make some chicken wings in it. If you want to pick just one of these and buy it separately, I would say large shallow is a good versatile size. You don't need dedicated cookware to cook in the microwave. We cook in the microwave all the time in regular microwave safe bowls. We'll often use a plate on top to contain splatter or to steam things. So we really wondered like, is this a gimmick? Is it worth it? Um, is there a reason you need to buy microwave specific cookware? Uh, we were super curious and had to check these things out. So let me tell you a little bit about their construction and what makes them unique. The thick frosted borosilicate glass that these are made from is specially designed to be more shatter resistant. Um, glass is really susceptible when there's wide swings in temperature changes. For example, taking a hot dish out of the microwave and putting it on a cold uh, surface, for example, some types of glass that can actually shatter it. Um, the thick borosilicate glass is not shatter proof. You know, if I trip and drop this, it will probably break, but it's much more shatter resistant and shock resistant. So you don't have that risk of taking out your beautiful dish and then shattering glass everywhere. It has a little pop up handle right here that doubles as a steam vent. Um, it also has a stainless steel, microwave safe, stainless steel rim that surrounds it with a silicone gasket inside that allows a really super tight seal. And that tight seal is really key to microwave cooking because you're going to ensure that all that moisture stays inside. You might have been surprised that I said that it has a metal rim and you know metal in the microwave typically does not work well. Um, this is a rounded metal rim specifically designed by Any Day. We heard about it from the founder, Stephanie Chen. And metal can work in the microwave under specific conditions. Uh, sharp corners are not good, like the tines of a fork, for example, um, the electricity can jump from point to point, but if the edges are rounded and very intentionally designed for the microwave, you actually can put metal in the microwave. We just do not recommend it unless it's an item that is specifically designed for you to do so. So throughout testing, we compared these to a regular Pyrex bowl and a plate on top as a lid. We also compared them to Corningware, which is really popular in the 80s, and we were really impressed by how the Any Day performed. It was Compared to the Pyrex bowl, for example, that has like the plate as a lid and feels a little rickety, this tight silicone seal here really created a really tight forming seal and the food produced inside the Any Day cookware was a little more moist, a little more tender. The Any Day cookware was also just slightly easier to use. It has this really nice cushiony uh, handle on the lid. It's a lot easier to take the lid off and on, more comfortable to put in and out of the microwave. Um, when you're holding a Pyrex bowl with a rickety plate, it can be a lot to like keep the parts together, especially when you're pulling it out and everything's hot. This very nicely, neatly contained uh, product with nice smooth edges. The frosted gives you a little bit of a finish on there, a little nice grip versus something that's super smooth. So they were slightly easier to use when compared to regular bowls or corningware, um, and they actually did produce slightly better food. Part of what you get when you purchase an Any Day set is a ton of recipes from the company. Sometimes when you get a new product like this, you're like, all right, I made my one thing, I made my steamed broccoli, like now what? They have a lot of answers for that now what? You can have fun, they have a newsletter, they keep churning out recipes, I'm on it and I keep seeing these new recipes that I keep thinking like, whoa, in a microwave? And you know what? The ones we tested, all of the recipes ended up being really good. All right, so I want to show you one of the recipes that we made from Any Day that was surprisingly good. Chicken wings in the microwave, hear me out, stay with me here. I'm going to show you how to do it. The lid. Basically, you just add all the ingredients, except for the chicken wings. I'm putting in um, some Dijon mustard here, then some honey, red pepper flakes, curry powder, and then little tiny cubes of butter. And we just wanna mix this all together, microwave it for a little bit so it melts, and then I'm gonna take it out and add the chicken wings and put everything back in here. This is really just to melt and meld everything all together. The stir halfway through, just to make sure everything's nice and even. There are some smart chefy things about these recipes. Like for example, we're blooming the curry in here right now. I can smell the curry, it smells delicious. I don't know if this is because David Chang is one of the backers of this and he's, you know, a legit chef, but they have some really nice ideas incorporated in here. All right. Open this up. It stays surprisingly cool. I could just pull this out with my hands. As you can see, 
It's starting to sizzle in there. I'm going to put the wings in. Plop. Stir them around to get coated. All right, so I've tossed the wings and the sauce all together. It gives me very clear instructions. I want to cover this and then vent, which means to lift the handle on the lid up a little bit, get a little steam out. And this is going to go back in. It says seven minutes. Wow, this is so easy to set. There we go. So, you know, I have to say we were pretty skeptical about these. Microwave cooking, it just does not have that sex appeal to it. In the end, we were surprised with how much we liked the any day cookware. From the microwave, that's super impressive. It's, it's really easy. You know, I have to clean the bowl, but it's dishwasher safe. That's not that bad. These were surprisingly delicious. We were um, really pleasantly surprised. All right, so microwave cooking is back. You know, with Lisa's review out, her tips for how to get the most out of your microwave, and some surprising additions to the cookware field that were actually pretty impressive. Things are looking up in the microwave realm. You know, we want you to maximize your microwave. They can be really uh, effective on the holidays, weeknight prep. Um, they can be easier to clean, easy to use. You know, there's a lot of reasons for you to revisit and rethink your microwave and make sure you're getting the most out of it. For more information about all the gear we talked about today, as well as more microwave recipes and tips, check out the links below or go to americastestkitchen.com. Yeah, and what do you use your microwave for? Do you have any great microwave tips for us? Make sure to let us know in the comments, like this video, and hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode.